Yeah, only seven years since their inception, and Mount Pleasant have found the winning formula. Securing their first hold on the Jamaica Premier League trophy with a 2-1 win over Cavalier on Sunday. Leger Williams has a recap of the gripping encounter. He will be the one to lead that prize. Trevante Stewart. An eight-month season built to a crescendo on Sunday night. Sabina Park, the mecca of cricket in Jamaica, for 90 minutes became a football battlefield for Mount Pleasant and Cavalier as they fought to determine who would be the Jamaica Premier League champions for the 2022-2023 season. Cavalier have been here before, champions a mere two years ago. As for Mount Pleasant, this was their very first final. It was only right Mount Pleasant would show nerves, correct? The answer to that was an emphatic no, as it took them only eight minutes to send their fans into ecstasy. of many clear-cut chances after that goal, with both teams doing their best to cancel each other out. But cancel out is exactly what Colin Anderson would do in the 83rd minute. Colin Anderson, the gem of the Cavalier season, gets his 20th goal this season. He has been locked out all game, but here he was on the doorstep to deliver for Cavalier again. The game now finally poised at one goal apiece. All the momentum was now with Cavalier, but a Mount Pleasant corner one minute from stoppage time added yet another twist to this enthralling tale. He's wearing the captain's armband, and he is the chosen one, surely, for Mount Pleasant. That's his second goal in the final. His third this season, he has saved his best game for last. Is that the clincher? Is that the one to give Mount Pleasant their first take-home? And that is how the match would end. Mount Pleasant becoming the 14th team to be crowned kings of Jamaican football. The first from the Garden Parish of St. Anne. Pride of St. Anne tonight. From Runaway Bay. Mount Pleasant are your Jamaica Premier League champions for the 2022-2023 season. Yeah, not just the pride of St. Anne last night, but the pride of St. Anne they will be for some time to come. Let's hear from Mount Pleasant's head coach, the former Reggae Boys coach, Theodore Tapper Whitmore. Words can't explain at the moment, you know. Um, we set out on a journey, you know, and we have completed the journey this afternoon. You know, so I'm very proud of the, the team the technical staff, the medical staff, the auxiliary staff, you know, the management, everyone, you know, it's a tough season. We went through a lot, the road wasn't easy, but, you know, we part here and there, you know, till we finally did it this afternoon. Yeah, the road was not easy at all, but Mount Pleasant, our champions of Jamaica's Premier League, joining us is our in-house football analyst, Lejay Williams. Lejay, first of all, fantastic job by the entire team on the coverage of the Jamaica Premier League last night, from the commentary to the analysis. Um, yourself, Chris Taylor, Dwight Jeremiah, absolutely fantastic. It was a pleasure to watch. How good a game was that though, LeJ? Yeah, it was really good. All throughout, you know, people would like to only see the goals. Mount Pleasant only scored their goals via set pieces. Cavalier really did as well. But I think from a tactical perspective, there was so much to admire the way how Mount Pleasant had to, they had to really change up their whole setup and their team from the semi-final. Missing Demario Phillips, missing Kimani Campbell. And they really had to put in Shandy James to try and maybe try and approximate what Demario um, Phillips would bring. They put in Sule Makala at left back, and uh, you know, coincidentally, I don't think he had the greatest game at left back. I think he was a bit too aggressive with some of his passing passing choices. Some issues there, but he came up really huge, big trumps, especially that second header. It was fantastic, and I think Mount Pleasant were very deserving winners. Yeah, I don't want to overreach here, but you spoke about the tactical aspects of the game. 
going into it on Friday when I spoke with Dwight Jeremiah, um, we spoke about this being a clash between Theodore Tapper Whitmore, the Mount Pleasant coach, and Rudolf Speed, the man who is in charge of Cavalier. Did Whitmore outcoach Speed? <laughs> um, that's difficult to say because the, the, the gap in the quality of the two teams is significant to me personally. It's not Cavalier didn't go out and do anything differently. Mount Pleasant didn't go out and do too much differently either. But if you're going to say uh, the winning team outcoached the other team, that's that's just really what people usually say. But I don't think it was like which a is clean... why I say I don't want to overreach, and I really want to get your genuine opinion on 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 how it unfolded. I wouldn't say it's a gen genuine out coaching. I, I would say maybe in the semi final, um, Tapa and the rest of the Mount Pleasant staff probably out coached the Iron Guidance coaching staff in that aspect. They would tell you that themselves. But in this case, I don't think it was exactly that because Mount Pleasant weren't as fluid as they wanted to be. Yes, they could, they created more. Yes, they were the better team. But I still think Cavalier were in the game for large portions of it. If you ask Rudolph Speed, he would have said that he controls certain game states the way how he wanted, especially after going behind. So I wouldn't say it's an out-and-out out coaching, but Mount Pleasant had the better players and I do think that the better, better tactical setup to win in the end. Yeah, let me put this question to you in this way then. Theodore Tapper Whitmore was sacked as reggae boys coach in late 2021. Yeah. Um, now, however you feel about that, there were some in the country who felt that the timing of that was incorrect. There are others who felt the right decision was made. Took up this Mount Pleasant job um, at the beginning of the season and now he's gotten them to win the Jamaica Premier League title. What does this title, if anything, say about Theodore Tapper Whitmore as a coach, as a tactician, as a knowledgeable football brain? Well, contrary to popular belief, he obviously popular is Popular belief? Yeah, I think popular belief is that he isn't a very knowledgeable coach. No, I, I, didn't I beg know to that. disagree. I didn't know that, that's news the, to the, me. The Jamaican public, generally from what I garner is that I, they don't think that he was necessarily fit to be the Jamaican coach. I don't subscribe to that thinking. People like to peddle a narrative that maybe they think that every coach is some tactical savant. That's not the case. That's why he works in close tandem with the people that he works with. Sir Alex Ferguson wasn't a, a tactical savant, but he got tactical savants around him. There are coaches that excel in certain things. If you, Ricardo, excel in writing, but someone else can't speak or you can't speak well, that's not the case, obviously. But <laughs> if, if, if you excel in writing and but you know that you don't speak well, you're going to get someone, you're going to write and make someone speak it for you. It's, it's a similar case with coaching. There's always trade-offs. And that's why you need a great staff generally. Obviously, the staff isn't praised a lot. And that's why I'm really glad that he did it yesterday. Paul Tiga did it yesterday. They really big up their entire coaching staff. You saw probably like 10 to 15 Mount Pleasant coaching staff getting medals. That's what they're there for. So I'm not saying that in terms of a tactician, in terms of a coach, I always thought that Tapa was a good coach because I think he did really good stuff for the reggae boys and he did really good stuff for Jamaican football generally. This whole phenomenon of young players getting into the Jamaica setup, it was really lost sometime during the 2000s, favoring the international players. I think that he is one who brought back that feeling of, okay, I'm doing well locally and I can get into this Jamaica team because of that. I've said that m many times, really. So I, I, I never subscribed to that thinking and I think that he proved a lot with his more pleasant job. Yeah, people, his detractors would say, okay, it's Jamaican football. You can only beat what's in front of you. And he had a lot of challenges this season. He had a really, he had 12 new signings. It's extremely difficult to maneuver a squad with so many new signings. And he did that really well. And I think that he deserves all the praise that he should be getting. I would also say, especially when you consider that he is not the first coach to take on this Mount Pleasant job. And it's a Mount Pleasant job that has been heavily invested in from the get-go and other coaches have failed before him and he now has success. Yeah, exactly. Um, they, they're really established coaches, Donovan Duke, really good coaches at that. Donovan Duke, who we know is a good coach all across Jamaican football. Wally Downs, who is still working with Mount Pleasant, in, especially with the younger teams. I think he's a really good coach as well. Paul Tigat Davis, Arnett guys are one of the better teams in the league this season. So, really good coaches tried and they didn't get the job done. Tapa did and 
football at the end of the day some people might say it's a results business right. i don't subscribe to that thinking you know, by the way but well you're an arsenal fan no surprise Mara, yeah. you had a question for yeah. me yeah i was going <laughs> to ask you um does this alleged put that um notion to rest the one that you've heard on the streets and i mean you're a man on the football scene all the time you talk to fans a lot more than we are in studio does this win put a rest to that it should. I think it should, but I don't think it should have been a, a discussion in the first place. But you know, people are going entitled to their op entitled to their opinions. Yeah, you have to leave them to that. But it should, especially the football that Mount Pleasant playing and during the regular season, he said it. They were pitchy patchy. A lot of things were going wrong. Sometimes things went went right. But in this playoff run, Mount Pleasant. Even if it was a very minuscule thing that they changed, yeah. they got every single coaching decision right. right. Not necessarily Tapa alone, obviously, as I, as I mentioned, he has a really good staff and he bigged up his staff as well. But Mount Pleasant got every single tactical decision right and that's why they're champions. Right, Colin Anderson picking up his 20th goal of the season. We did talk about it on Friday, whether it would be between Colin or would it be Trevanti. He got it, Colin, and of course he walked away with the golden boot. What yeah, is on? Yeah, that's a really big accomplishment for him, everything that he's coming from. He wasn't someone who played football all the way coming up uh, as a young player. Only played one season of Manning Cup, then came. And Rudolf Speed is also an excellent coach. Um, in the previous segment, they spoke about coaches that are known to improve players. Rudolf Speed is one of those players. That's why, one of those coaches, that's why he, he has such a young squad. Cavalier has an average age of little over 20. So they are young players playing at a really high level. Carl Anderson is one of those players and he isn't one known for his technical prowess but he's getting the goals, he's being coached to be in the right positions and he does usually take some chances so kudos to him. Yeah and he made what I think is a very important point Rudolf Speed that they got to the knockout final, they got to the Premier League final and their women also got to the Premier League final and the no. women's knockout final as well. So clearly a lot of quality coaching is going on with the Cavalier setup. Um, something has to be said as well, Lejean. I know we've made this point before, but the fact that Cavalier would have lost Dwayne Atkinson and the fact that they would have lost um, Richard King, um, players on the defensive end, on the attacking end, and they have still been able to produce such a quality season is is really a big deal for them, isn't it? Yeah, it's a huge deal, um, especially I think Dwayne Atkinson. I said last week that, yes, Richard King, I'm not taking away from his quality. I do think that when in the league, he's one of probably like a top three defender in the league. Yes, centre back at that. But in terms of, I think it's easier to replace a defender's output, especially the way a Cavalier play. Yeah. They don't necessarily play the tiki taka football that they once did. But on the attack, well, he end, said the reason for the change was because he didn't have those players anymore. Yeah, exactly. So they switched from the tiki taka um, and went to a different style. Exactly. But you see, someone like Dwayne Atkinson, as I've been harping on about, that's not someone that you can replace. Right. It, in terms of his talent, it's almost one of one in the island generally, across the island. So you have to approximate what he does well. So that's why they have Shanil Thomas to there, have his creative passing. They have Colin Anderson who was always playing with him, of course. They have Ronaldo Robinson who came in for the final to add his pace, maybe his dynamism, uh, a former KC player as well. It didn't work out in the end, but Cavalier had an excellent season across all fronts. They didn't get the title, but I have no doubts that they'll be right back amongst the fold next year. All right, I'm stealing 15 seconds. Can't leave the segment without a quick word on Saleh Makala. He's the one that won it for Mount Pleasant. Two goals on the night. Yeah, excellent player. I think he's, he, he has so much variety to his game. He plays in so many different positions. He's probably Mount Pleasant's MVP apart from Trevante this season because of the work that he's done all across the pitch. And if there's anyone who deserved to get those two goals to bring Mount Pleasant over the line, is Sule. So congrats to him, congrats to Mount Pleasant and yeah, great JPL Big season. up Tapa. <laughs> <laughs> wow, yeah, big up Tapa, big up all of Mount Pleasant and big up Cavalier as well for getting to the final and turning up for the final even though Rudolf Speed said they, there was never any chance that they would not have turned up despite missing the pre-final press conference. We go to a break. We'll be back with more on the Sports Bank Zone. Congratulations, Mount Pleasant. Congratulations, all of the parish of St. Anne.
stay with Sportsmax on YouTube and follow us on all social pages for updates, news and entertainment. <laughs>